going on y'all this will be your boy scatter by nature tv and we're here for a review of the season premiere of the brand new abc drama series queens okay now as you guys already know i don't really review scripted shows like that you know in the past i've tried to review the haves and the have nots didn't work i tried to review being mary jane that didn't work i tried to review um single ladies but that also didn't work so i just decided to stick to reality tv but in my quest of trying to grow improve my channel and do a lot more than just reality TV I decided that I'm going to give this scripted series a chance okay and it stars Eve, Brandy, Natari Naughton and I don't know who this other woman is okay I don't know her name for nothing but this show tells the story of a now defunct um, rap group okay they're a rap foursome they have been broken up for over 20 years and now they are living separate lives and now they're about to come back together for something special all right so uh without any further ado we're going to get into this review and we're going to be out of here it is like 2 46 in the morning and i'm still up doing videos this is the fifth video that i'm doing but it's probably going to be the first video that's put out but this is the fifth video so it's 2 47 in the morning and I'm still up doing videos, child. That's just how much I love y'all, okay? Just how much, okay? With a slight toothache, but I'll be all right. But with that being said, y'all, let's get into the review. Now, we're opening up with Brianna, which is played by Eve, okay? Now, um, her husband is having issues. They have, like, five children. He has no work. No money coming in. And she's doing whatever she can to make sure that her five kids have food on the table. And that the family continues to move forward. Now we got Jill. Who is played by Natari Naughton. Okay. She's apparently um, this church going God fearing woman. And she is in the chapel confessing to having an affair on her husband. And she's saying that she's in love. And she just doesn't know how to tell him. And she just doesn't know if she's ever going to tell him. But she's in love with whomever it is that she's sleeping with at this moment. We're introducing Valeria. I don't know who this woman is that's playing her. But however, she is obviously in Hollywood. She is um, a talk show host. And she's probably doing the most out of all of the girls that was in the group. Naomi, played by Brandy. She's an around the way girl. Who was also a part of the rap group. But now she's singing with the guitar. Giving you a nasty India Ivory impression. And she's singing in the clubs now. And she's trying to get her music out. And her cre creativity out. In a different type of way. But while she's performing. She's recognized as one of them nasty bitches. Nasty bitches. Which is the name of the group. Um, she performs one of the songs from the nasty girls. And she throws that mic down. And walks away. Now that's my kind of bitch right there, okay? So then we get into the legacy of the Nasty Bitches. We see flashbacks and a performing on all the stages, winning all of the awards and just topping the charts and everything else. But now we're here. Brianna is recognized at the grocery store. She's um at the grocery store. There's this um young couple kissing on top of her car and she opens up the trunk and this man says, Are you? I know who you are. You from He think that she's in TLC, but um that girl was like, no, there ain't no way in hell she could be in TLC, you know, walking around with sweats on. Like, no, that's not nobody from TLC. And Brianna looking at her like, bitch, who the fuck you talking to? That was some funny shit. But we find out that Jill is now living in Billings, Montana. One place that I would never guess that anybody black would be living in. But she's in Billings, Montana. She takes a pregnancy test and she learns that she's still not pregnant. Um, apparently her and her husband are trying to have a baby, but she's obviously having trouble having a baby. She apologizes to her husband. Her husband is not feeling any type of way. So she meets up, um, with this woman. I really don't know where the hell this woman come from. But they hugged each other and I already knew what it was once they gave each other that, that hard ass hug. It was going down, okay? They were kissing on each other. And it's pretty clear that Jill is now a lesbian. She's a lesbian. And um, she doesn't, you know, she was supposed to tell her husband that she's gay. But she hasn't found the words or the heart to tell her husband. She's saying that she, I, I like, my husband, I'm married. I'm trying to have a baby. My dad is a preacher. He's prayed over people that are gay. So what am I supposed to do? 
and the woman wants to walk away from Jill. But Jill doesn't want her to walk away. But at the same time, how can you be with somebody who cannot live in their truth? And Jill is not living in her truth. She's still in the closet. She can't be happy in the open. She got to be happy behind closed doors. And you know, it's just like us men dealing with the download men is always some bullshit with that bullshit you know what i'm saying so that that's exactly what that was that's the type of story we're getting with that so we're in atlanta where naomi is living at and she pulls up at her mama house apparently she ain't seen her mama in over a year and she's coming to see her daughter jojo jojo comes to the door she realizes it's naomi and she chews her the fuck out she basically saying listen i'm your mother jojo said no you're just somebody who pops in and out of my life and i'm tired of it Basically, Naomi and JoJo don't really have a relationship. Um, JoJo is always off chasing after some dream, leaving her daughter behind. And her mother is taking up all of the work and everything else. So we can already see what this story is going to be. So I'm just sitting up here wondering, why is the Naomi not in JoJo's life? I wonder if we're going to find out about it. So a woman on the show was making comments about all lives matter very controversial and now they want to fire her valerie feels like as a woman of color i should be up there you know and at this point she's getting in a job she's about to get the pay that she wants and all that type of stuff so that so valerie is basically getting everything that she wants a song comes on the radio i guess it samples their song nasty girl and they all hear it at the same time so then the nasty bitches uh no, no, no. Valeria was asked to get back with the band. She's like, why would I do that? I'm in a whole better place. Why would I get back with the band? So she's one of the only ones that got some success. And she feels like she doesn't necessarily need the girl group anymore. Nasty bitches reunite. Um, Jill, Brianna, and Naomi, they are all happy to see one another. Um, but then Valeria comes in. And it's pretty clear that Valeria and Naomi got some unfinished business. As soon as Naomi sees Valeria, Naomi goes for the kill and she beats that ass, okay? And apparently it's over a man. It's over the man, Ed, uh, Eric, which is the manager. Apparently he was messing around with Naomi and he fucked around and chose Valeria over Naomi. And now Naomi's still bitter about that situation, child. So, Lil Muffin, which is the rapper that sampled the song, is doing a BET Awards performance and they want them to come along and perform with her. Um, Brianna is like, I got two kids, I got five kids at home. I need this chick. But Jill wasn't sure because she's pretty much a nun now and she really don't know if she could get on stage and say those things again. Um, Naomi and Valeria go at it again. They start arguing about the past and Naomi blames her for breaking up the group. Mmm. More tea, I see. So, Jill, Naomi, and Brianna, they all go out to dinner and they discuss Valeria. And they talk about how Naomi still can't stand Valeria over the Eric situation. Bria then uh, reveals her husband's infidelity. Because um, that's the part I forgot to mention. Um, after she came back from the grocery store and all that other stuff, she had bought this lingerie ready to give it to her man and she walked in on her man cheating. So I totally forgot to mention it. Um, she talks about the infidelity with her husband and all the girls are there for her. And you know, they, they are all happy to be around each other, happy to see each other, happy to have drinks. And, you know, they were basically saying that Brianna has grown because if this was 20 years ago, she would have did some other shit finding out that her husband had cheated on her. So after the women have lunch and dinner together, Naomi runs into Eric. Eric uh, was talking about Lil Muffin and how she's doing well right now and how the nasty bitches was, their, was his very first act. They're drinking. They're talking about feelings. He said he's been married twice, divorced twice, and have no kids. Naomi said, do you want to still take these drinks or do you want to still talk about your feelings? Later on, they're in the bed having sex. So as we already know, Valerie, Valeria did not want to do the group shit. She did not want to reunite with her group. But after she got fired, she decided that she wanted to do the BET Awards show. Valeria and Naomi apologized to one another and now they're ready to move forward. They went into rehearsal. They are having a great time at rehearsal. But then 
Brianna's husband Jeff comes in with some bad news. Apparently he got a tumor in his brain and he may be having cancer. Well, he is having cancer. So the next thing you know, Brianna was like, I have all five of your kids. You go out and cheat on me and then you trust to get cancer. She said she cannot wait to nurse him back to health so she can leave his motherfucking ass. And girl, I don't blame you, honey, because he cheated on you in your house, in your bed, okay? Your house, your bed, the house that you all share with your five children. Yes, he needs to be burned to the cross, honey. So then, Naomi um, spoke with Valeria about JoJo. You know what I'm saying? Um, she said that JoJo's father wasn't ready to be a father, so she never told him. And she felt like it was the best decision for JoJo to not know who her father is. Because it's one thing for her to know him and him not being there. And for her then for her to not know him at all. Valeria was talking about her foster kid past and how her mother left her on the back porch um, when she was growing up. And she went to a foster care. And every time she thought she was meeting a brand new foster parent and thinking they was nice and they were going to take her in. They were treating her like she had whooping her ass. So she does tell the, uh, Naomi that she needs to tell JoJo who her father is. But Naomi ain't trying to hear that. She 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 wanna continue to beef with each other. Lil Muffin and, and Jill have a conversation. And um she was just talking about the pressures of the music industry. And you know, with Jill being a veteran in the music industry, she was telling her all the things that she doesn't need to do. So next thing you know, um, she gives them the address to um, her house. And Jill, Valeria, and Naomi, they found her OD laid out, passed out on the ground. Cocaine, all that. When, they, when she's in the hospital, you know, um, she wakes up. Little Muffin wakes up. The manager is not really caring about her condition. All he cares about is her going to the BET Awards. Jill slaps the shit out of him. And now they lose the um the opportunity that they got Jill and Naomi go at it low blow for low blow for low motherfucking blow okay and after all of that Jill admits to them that she's gay Valeria and Brianna are very supportive of her they feel like that she needs to move on with her life and just be happy Naomi and um Jill apologize to each other Lil Muffin comes back and she asks them to perform with her. She's not going to perform without them. They perform at the BET Awards, do a great job, and I think that Jill fixed the words so it could fit her lifestyle as of today. And her lesbian lover was at home watching the show. Um, and at the end of the episode, they find out that they're going on a world tour with Lil Muffin. So now they're reuniting to go on a world tour. Child, when I tell y'all, this episode was so good. And I know it seems like I just ran through the review or, or something like that. But that's not really the case. It's just that it's the first episode. And you know, you don't really have that much to talk about on the first episode. But this episode was pretty loaded. It was pretty much us introduced, being introduced to the characters. And us figuring out, you know, talking about their individual stories and their backgrounds and all of that stuff. It really was, it was very great. The writing was amazing because it's not just about the music, it's about their personal lives too. So we get to see all of that. We get to see the dynamics with Brianna and her husband. We get to see the dynamics with Jill and her husband and her lesbian lover. We get to see the dynamics with Naomi and her daughter. We get to see the dynamics with Valeria and her, and her being big old Hollywood, you know, being the only one out of the group that saw some major success after the breakup. We get to see a lot of different layers to these stories. And I am excited about reviewing this show. I'm loving it. So, um, long as y'all watch the review, long as y'all want the review, I'm going to give it to you because I am definitely enjoying Queens, okay? So, um, most definitely I'll be reviewing this for the remainder of the season. Okay, so, with that being said, y'all, be sure to like, rate, comment, subscribe to my channel. Also, click the notification bell whenever you want to be notified for a video. Also, with that being said, if you want to follow me on any form of social media, my Twitter and my IG will be down below. If you want me to follow you back on IG, all y'all got to do is hit me up in the DMs on IG with the hashtag message team Scotty, and I will definitely follow you back. With that being said, you guys, your boy is out of here. Until my next video, I'll holla at you later. Peace out. We can always find our way to a fun moment, even in the shady bunch.